Hello everyone I welcome you back to the channel today in the next episode of Kanya Voice we have a very great guest of honor with us Dr Anujit Paul sir who will be sharing his thoughts on ophthalmology residency as well as in general about ophthalmology as a branch I welcome you sir Thank you so much Akshar thank you for being such a great host it's indeed a pleasure to be here so without further ado we can begin Yeah thank you sir so um about dr anujit paul sir he is an ophthalmology resident he is also a peer reviewed pubmed index researcher with greater than 100 citations he is also the co-founder for doctors for a cause which is one of the largest medical student based ngo and the national president of gcmer uh, organization which foster and guide students with respect to the medical research and about kanyamed kanyamed is an organization which is celebrating the medical fraternity we want to empower doctors not by just uh, providing them the comfortable performance based uh, apparels but also celebrating in form of a community and we want to build a community in such a manner that once you know a doctor gets on board with kanyamed they can always have that uh, feeling of being in a family so in today's video let us talk about ophthalmology as a residency as well as in general as a branch so sir like if i talk about a day in the life of an ophthalmology resident so how does your day look like typical right so uh, a day in ophthalmology resident starts quite early because the one thing that separates uh, ophthalmology from any other branch is that because you're dealing with eyes you can't really look at an eye with a torch so there's something called a dilated examination for which pupils need to be dilated to look at the retina and most of our examinations involve either some sort of combinations of mirrors prisms microscopes that sort of thing yeah. so you have to go early in the morning and my day usually starts around uh, 6 am when i wake up if i have something to prepare for for that day i prepare that for example a seminar or a journal club or maybe some studying that i have to do uh, depending upon the day i either have to see my post operative patients early in the morning or i have to prepare for ot in the morning so the first chunk of the day for about one hour goes in rounds which i usually right now i'm a third year resident so when i was a junior i would first go early in the morning and prepare all the patients and then my seniors would come but right now i go slightly late and you know uh, throw my weight around once in a while <laughs> and um so anyway rounds finish by about 8 am in the morning and then we have a long day of ot's or we have a long day of opd which goes on till about 2 pm or 3 pm followed by post graduate classes so as a post graduate you have a dual role of seeing patients maintaining wards as well as studying so the early morning and all that goes in patient care so either i'm in the ot all morning or i'm in the opd and i'm seeing opd cases or i'm treating some ward patient the good thing about ophthalmology is that uh, patients come to you when they are relatively well they do not usually present to you when they're acutely sick so uh, there's a running joke that ophthalmologists can can do anything which does not involve the eye and to some part it is true because we try we end up losing our non um, ophthal skills Right. So uh, after a really long day in the morning and the afternoon we have classes so classes are actually hosted by residents itself so residents take classes for residents and faculty members just are uh, just there to moderate the sessions etc and in the evening you have evening rounds once again and as a first year resident there is a lot of lag work that has to be done so you end up returning back at 6 pm or 7 pm but now as a final year resident resident i come back by 4 pm maybe latest by 5 pm okay. and then the remaining part of preparing for the next day starts from then right, right. definitely sir so uh, you know something which is very adventurous as well a variety of you know options available uh, like starting if you you are starting for something related to optics and you know you have to be knowing a little bit of physics wala side and then something like opd and uh, teaching as well so it's quite a balanced day and uh, you know if you can highlight some of the challenges faced in ophthalmology as such so that our uh, who, those who are watching the video can know that what are the ch- challenges that are faced so uh, one major challenge which uh, is very well overcomable because a lot of ophthalmologists have overcome it is understanding how to actually use these instruments because uh, that actually depends upon your hand eye coordination your binocular vision half the things requires you to look through a, a microscope 
try to adjust your vision so that you can see objects in three dimension as well as adjust your surgical hand to holding smaller instruments so the biggest challenge is getting this hand eye coordination understanding dexterity and getting more accomplished with these instruments so whereas a general surgery or a general medicine resident can be thrown into an icu and they have to manage something that they've been looking at all their life as an intern for an ophthalmology resident it takes about 6 to 8 months for them to actually get acquainted and actually look at a patient elicit history pick up findings etc yeah. other than that uh, picking up instruments and all that is always a challenge so this is one small drawback but it is definitely not something to worry about right definitely you know the general perspective about ophthalmology is that only that it's very minute you know you need to be yeah. very fine otherwise many a things could happen in that so it's definitely a thing which which is acquired with time and the skills will definitely develop if you keep remaining persistent so sir on the similar note you know if you can advise that who should take ophthalmology who should consider that okay i have these particular interest i should be going into ophthalmology and someone who should not take ophthalmology so that you know maybe they can uh, not cry about it later <laughs> so uh, uh, there are two reasons why i feel somebody should not take ophthalmology uh, number one is a practical reason and number one is a very personal reason so uh, one practical reason is that if you are uh, from your very young mbbs days uh, enjoy the thrill of resuscitating resuscitating a patient dealing with critically ill patients always in the icu always in the trauma always um, uh, i think this is something that has been inculcated from tv shows mainly where tv shows show doctors as uh, people who carry stethoscopes and give cpr to every second second patient which is not the uh, case in reality there are a lot of things that go in before doing all these uh, risky maneuvers so if you are someone who goes in for and relates to that thing by all and well please uh, i have no issues with that but maybe ophthalmology is not the branch for you because it is a very relaxed branch it is a very easy branch uh, the scope is very vast but the syllabus and everything is a little less so maybe in that case if you have the thrill of going for something like that you could go for emergency medicine or anesthesia or general medicine or something like that Yeah. secondly a reason why you should not take ophthalmology is because it is a very expensive branch because it involves a lot of uh, technologically advanced instruments to actually delineate the structures of the eye which means that even as a resident you will have to get your own equipment to see a patient and that can very well go into the 10000s or the 20000s which is actually quite expensive even after you enter medicine because you have a lot of things to worry about as a resident yeah. but if you can get over those uh, hurdles and if you're looking for a really interesting life which is combined with medical diagnostic surgical patient management ophthalmology is the branch for you patients in ophthalmology barely stay one night in the hospital unless they hear for some grave reason if a patient gets sick you can easily transfer the patient to general medicine or general surgery we deal with only normal patients who are systemically stable and have come for an ocular problem Right. A very interesting anecdote that I want to share in this regard is that uh, I think as UGs we all study about cataract, right. which is opacification of the lens. But what we don't realize that it is a physiological process. Everyone's lens will opacify with age, just like uh, your hair hairline will recede with age. Your lens will opacify with age. So a normal patient will not go to an uh, ENT surgeon or to a uh, doctor. or to a surgeon or to a general medicine or anything like that but a normal patient will always come to an ophthalmologist in the normal state because their lens will physiologically opacify so if you are a good ophthalmologist and if you are a competent cataract surgeon you will get a patient at the age of, when he is at the age of 40 coming to you for his cataract surgery if you do a good cataract surgery he will come to you 5 years later for his other eye if you do a good job then he will bring his wife or his brother or his best friend to you for surgery and if you do a good job then the list keeps going on okay. so ophthalmology is probably the only branch where a patient when he is well will come to you for treatment and remember there are always two eyes so there are two chances of um, managing the patient and i'm seeing that you are wearing glasses i'm wearing contacts as well okay. so as time goes on as the desire to go spectacle free or refractive error free there are a lot of refractive surgeries coming into being so remember that it is one of the few branches where a patient comes to you for cosmetic purposes 
as much as for the disease, as much as the fact of when they are perfectly well, just for some treatment. So there's a huge scope in uh, earning money, in earning respect, in earning skill in ophthalmology as well. There are very few emergencies. If you pass your residency and do a good fellowship, you will end up with a very good life uh, going forward. Right. Definitely, sir. So, uh, it, you know, it's a very uh, sorted branch, very balanced branch in which you will get taste of every, you know, sort of uh, variety that is available right from medicine to the surgery. So definitely, sir, as you said about the fellowships or specializations. So what are the, you know, some of the fellowship opportunities since it's a terminal branch? So what are the opportunities? Are they really needed? When should one try to, you know, uh, do a setup of their own or maybe practice under someone? So you mentioned the third or the first advantage of ophthalmology, right? When you said terminal branch. Yeah. So in this age of going into a permanent rat race with neat SS and all that coming out, I would just like to remind everybody that there is no neat SS for ophthalmology. Once you're an ophthalmologist, that is the end of your MCQ exams. It's time to see patients. It's time to enter the hospital. You can let go of these books and these coaching centers, which you cannot do with general medicine or with general surgery or OBG or pediatrics or something like that. So you can do something called a fellowship, which is just a hands-on training in a specialty. For example, you take up ophthalmology and you're really interested in corneal diseases or retinal diseases. You can do a two-year stint in fellowship where you take somebody who's a mentor to you, just like in your postgraduate days, teaches you how to detect retinal diseases, how to go through retinal diseases. There is actually no exam for that. There is just an interview system. And once you get in, you can become a slightly more better specialist, a slightly more uh, high acumen specialist in that branch. But it's not that it's required. You can go for a senior residency as well, and you can do really well. But fellowship is a really good option, and you are totally spared from any other MCQ exam. <laughs> Right, definitely. So the pathway of learning will still be continued without any burden of, you know, qualifying of getting a particular branch of getting a particular seat. So that's definitely the uh, main point of attention here. And so, so like, as we discussed, uh, if you could share your future plan, since you are right now in your third year residency, you must have something planned for you, like maybe fellowships or whatever. So if you could, you know, share with our audience, they could get an idea. So uh, I fall under that unique category of resident who was affected by COVID. So uh, my aim right now is to completely revamp my surgical skills. So I will be going in for a fellowship. I'm very uh, keen on doing a vitroretinal fellowship. I'm really interested in doing vitrectomies and surgeries like that. So uh, the, uh, the objective is to become quite good at something and still remain really good at everything else. Right. So keeping that in mind, I'll try and go for a veterinary fellowship because uh, COVID has really changed the ball game for undergraduates as well as postgraduates. For someone like me, all I need right now is a little bit of polishing in surgical skills. Right. Definitely, sir. So it's always a good uh, opportunity there available to learn fellowships and learn the surgical skills as well. So, sir, like uh, someone who is watching right now, maybe preparing for NEET PG or maybe some MBBS student right from their second, third year interested in about ophthalmology. So what should be your message to them that, you know, how should they relate to the branch, what they should expect and how they should, you know, keep going ahead? So um, I may say this in a very funny way, but I mean it with utmost seriousness. It is impossible to examine an eye as a third year undergraduate with a torch. Right. No matter which medical college teaches you whatever, uh, iris shadow and depth of anterior chamber and all those funny things that they ask you to examine as a third year medical student is not ophthalmology. Okay, there is much, much more. Even I did not know that. Uh, as a third year, you might not be interested. You might be more interested in ENT. Usually, a lot, a lot lesser people are interested in community medicine. But going forward, you would be more interested in medicine and surgery and gynae when your fourth year subject starts. But the way ophthalmology is taught in undergraduation is not what ophthalmology is. So if your perception is built from your third year knowledge, which is not a very good perception, my only advice to undergraduates would be to give Ophthal another chance to rethink it as a branch during post-graduation, to maybe use this video and kind of meds video and maybe other resources to gain some experience that um, the, the ophthalmology which you read is very different from the ophthalmology which we live and learn on a daily basis. So uh, give Ophthal another chance. That's all I have to say. <laughs> 
right so definitely sir you know this is a sort of a personal experience also that uh, once you prepare say ent it becomes ent is a bit you know more a short and easy crisp subject uh, community <laughs> medicine is a never ending spectrum but on the similar note of technology once you know you start learning all the surgical names all the procedures there also happens a sort of fear with that so you need to always understand that it's not like always mentioned in the book once you are you know on the ground then things will definitely be different and obviously you have mentors like sir who can you know guide you at whatever part of journey you are so i would like to again uh, thank you for your time and uh, sharing with our viewers the complete guide about ophthalmology as a branch thank you so much thank you akshar thank you kainamed it's an amazing initiative that you've tried to make and i hope it succeeds and uh, i would be more than happy to come on and help out and you can always check out my uh, instagram page is filled with ophthal in general it's filled with a lot of research related content so if you need any help in ophthal or if you need any help with guidance with research i'm just one dm away so thank you once again and uh, all the best to you also for your final exams thank you thank you sir so to all the viewers i would request you to uh, please share and subscribe to the channel if you have not done yet for more such amazing uh, med reviews about various topics so that we can together build a community thank you sir thank you for your time take care everyone keep learning stay safe and stay healthy